Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie Oliver Twist, released in the year 2005. The movie opens up in 19th century England where a penniless orphan, Oliver Twist, is brought back to a workhouse where he was born. He's brought there by a parish beadle, Mr. Bumble, because it's his ninth birthday today and it's time for him to work at the warehouse. Shortly after the introduction with the officials, Oliver is taken to the warehouse and is asked to separate the rope fibers, learning from the kid beside him. Oliver and the other resident children are treated poorly and given very little food throughout the day. Because of hunger, some children cannot even sleep at night. As a result, the boys figure out a plan and conduct a lottery from which Oliver is selected. Now his task is to ask for more food at the next meal. Although risky, Oliver does as instructed. He asks for some more food after finishing what was offered to him. When he does so, he is chased by the old man who is in charge of the food. After knowing about Oliver's act, Mr. Bumble pays a visit to the workhouse officials and informs them. This infuriates the workhouse officials who decide to get rid of Oliver and offer a cash reward for anyone willing to take Oliver off their hands. After nearly being made an apprentice to a cruel chimney sweeper, Oliver is taken in by Mr. Sourberry, an undertaker. After arriving at the new owner's house, Oliver follows all the orders made by Mr. Sourberry and his wife. Despite Oliver doing what is ordered, Sourberry's wife and senior apprentice Noah do not like him at all. He's always bullied by Noah, while Sourberry's wife also scolds him for completing tasks late. After multiple poor treatments, Oliver eventually snaps and attacks Noah when the latter makes fun of his mother. The next morning, knowing his life with the Sourberries will only get worse, Oliver runs away from there on foot. In the next scene, Oliver starts his journey of a 70-mile walk to London, carrying little food with him. After his food is finished, he tries to ask for some by stopping at a roadside house, but is chased away by a rude owner who thinks of him as a beggar. Walking for several days continuously, Oliver feels weak and lacks energy. He's unable to walk further and collapses on the road out of exhaustion. At the same time, a kindly old woman notices him and gives him food and lodgings for a night. The next morning, as soon as he wakes up, Oliver continues his journey to London. After a week of travel, Oliver arrives at the city, starving and feet full of bruises. While looking at the people around the city, he meets Jack Dawkins, aka the Artful Dodger, a young pickpocketer. When Dodger realizes Oliver is starving, he sneaks some bread and meat for him. In order to find a place to sleep at night, Dodger invites Oliver to his house, which he shares with several other teenage pickpockets and their quirky elderly leader, Fagin. Fagin provides the teenagers with good food and a place to stay, while the teenagers pickpocket and bring valuable items to him. Soon, Oliver is trained by Fagin and other boys on how to pickpocket and become a member of their group. In the following scene, Oliver is on his first outing with the pickpockets. Dodger and another pickpocketer steal a handkerchief from a gentleman named Mr. Brownlow while he's reading a book in front of a bookshop. When the shop owner calls out for the thieves, Mr. Brownlow mistakenly thinks that Oliver is the thief and starts chasing him. One by one, a large number of people join the chase and at last Oliver is caught. Oliver is then taken to the court by Mr. Brownlow for a trial. However, he is too weak to stand in front of the judge after receiving a heavy punch by an old man. Despite this, the judge believes that Oliver is faking being ill and punishes him with three months of labor. Just then, the bookshop owner arrives there and confesses that Oliver is not the thief. Feeling guilty for what he has done, Mr. Brownlow takes Oliver with him to his house. Elsewhere, Fagin is angry at Dodger for letting Oliver get caught. Meanwhile, Bill Sykes, one of Fagin's associates, approaches him while they're discussing Oliver. Bill suggests Nancy, a young call girl, go to the court and ask about the whereabouts of the boy. Despite Nancy's unwillingness, Bill compels her to visit the court where she finds some information about Mr. Brownlow along with his address. At his house, Mr. Brownlow asks his wife to take good care of Oliver and provide him with nutritious food. After some days, Oliver recovers from his weakness and starts assisting Mr. Brownlow in his works. Mr. Brownlow informally adopts Oliver, giving him new clothes, lodgings, and the promise of a good education. One day, a parcel from the bookshop owner arrives at Mr. Brownlow's door, and Oliver receives it. Mr. Brownlow asks Oliver to reach out to the man who handed him the parcel, but he fails. He then asks Oliver to return his other books to the bookshop and also hands him a five-pound bill to pay the owner. 
After asking directions with Mrs. Brownlow, Oliver leaves the house. Unfortunately, while he's searching for the bookshop, he's caught by Nancy and Bill. In the next scene, Bill and Nancy forcefully take Oliver to Fagin's place, where other boys make fun of Oliver's clothing and check his pockets. They find the five-pound bill and hand it to Fagin. Seeing this, Bill becomes furious and shouts at Fagin, claiming that he found the boy so he should get the bill. While they're talking, Oliver tries to escape, shouting for help. After some chasing, Fagin manages to catch Oliver by himself. He brings him back to his place, where the boys strip his clothes and make him wear the old ones. Soon, Fagin takes Oliver to a room upstairs and locks him there. The next day, Fagin comes up to Oliver, bringing him some food to eat. He tries to make Oliver understand that he should not betray them and inform the police about them. Before leaving, he also threatens Oliver by telling him a story of a boy who got taken out after he snitched on them. Despite this, Bill is still worried that Oliver will betray them and tell the authorities about their criminal activities. Hence, Oliver is put under constant supervision until Bill discovers the boy's connection to the rich Mr. Brownlow. That night, Nancy arrives at Fagin's to pick up Oliver and bring him to Bill. After Oliver arrives at Bill's place, he teaches him a few things about pistols and takes him to his accomplice, Toby Crackett. Together, they take Oliver to Mr. Brownlow's house for robbing. Oliver begs them to not make him steal from Brownlow, but they force him to jump over the compound wall and move along. Bill makes Oliver enter the house through a window opening, instructing him to open the front door as soon as he gets in. Oliver is pushed inside the house, but he hesitates to unlock the front door. Enraged, Bill points a gun at him and makes him open the door. At the same time, Mr. Brownlow hears the commotion and comes out with a gun. As soon as Oliver unlocks the door, Bill and Toby barge in. They are discovered by Mr. and Mrs. Brownlow. When Oliver tries to run towards Mr. Brownlow, Bill and Brownlow both fire a shot and Oliver gets hurt in the process. Before Mr. Brownlow can call the police, Bill and Toby flee from the place, carrying Oliver with them. As the two are running, Bill plans to kill Oliver to ensure his silence, but falls into a nearby river before he can take action. Afraid to get caught, Toby leaves Bill to drown and runs away with Oliver. Later, Toby arrives at Fagin's carrying an injured Oliver. Fagin and Nancy bandage Oliver's wound and inquire about Bill. After having a drink, Toby tells Fagin that their plan failed and Oliver tried to snitch on them. Lastly, he tells them that while they were running on the roads, Bill fell into a river and was seen swimming. The scene then shifts to Bill, who has somehow managed to survive. However, he is suffering from a fever and is confined to bed. As soon as Fagin arrives there, Bill inquires about Oliver and plots to kill him when he has recovered. Tired of the snitching, Fagin, who has been kind to Oliver so far, also agrees with Bill. However, Nancy doesn't want to see Oliver get hurt, so she gathers some courage, drugs Bill, and sneaks into Brownlow's house. There, she meets Mrs. Brownlow and reveals to her that Oliver is innocent. As Mr. Brownlow is absent, she asks Mrs. Brownlow to inform him to meet her at the London Bridge at Sunday midnight so she can provide more information about Oliver. On Sunday midnight, while Fagin and Bill are talking with each other, Nancy tries to leave for the meeting, but is stopped by Bill. She pretends that she's going out to get fresh air, but Bill is in no mood to listen to her and pushes her into a room. However, Fagin feels that something is odd with Nancy, so he asks Dodger to spy on her. The next midnight, Mr. Brownlow can be seen waiting for Nancy to arrive at the bridge. When she arrives, she approaches Mr. Brownlow and takes him away from the road, suspecting that someone is following her. At the meeting, Nancy cautiously reveals that Oliver is staying with Fagin and his group of pickpockets. She also suggests he call the police and go after Fagin before it's too late. Listening to this, Brownlow leaves to call the police. Unfortunately, the artful Dodger, who has been sent by the suspicious Fagin to spy on Nancy, has heard everything and he rushes to inform Fagin about it. Dodger approaches Fagin and tells him everything about Nancy and her act. After the revelation, Fagin instructs his boys to pack their belongings and leave the place. Later, a furious Bill arrives home and brutally beats Nancy to death. The next day, information about Oliver and Fagin appear in the newspaper, including Nancy's murder and the suspect Bill Sykes. Bill's ever-present dog, Bullseye, is also mentioned in the news, which is a dead giveaway to his identity. Fagin can be seen hiding in Toby's place, while Bill can be seen walking away from the city. 
Posters are also pasted around the city about Bill and the reward for whoever will give his information. After unsuccessfully trying to eliminate the dog, Bill arrives at Toby's residence asking to let him in. When Toby lets Bill in, he's attacked by an angry Dodger for killing Nancy. Just then, Bullseye arrives outside and begins barking. Soon, police officers and local people gather around the house, asking for Bill to surrender himself. Eventually, Dodger, who is outraged at Bill for killing the kind-hearted Nancy, reveals their location to the authorities. With no options left, Bill takes Oliver with him and plans to escape, knowing that he will not be shot if the boy is with him. He takes Oliver through the rooftop to the other side, but eventually gets surrounded by the police and the public. When he tries to use the rope to get to the other side of the building, he notices his dog in front and gets distracted. As a result, he slips accidentally, causing the rope to tighten around his neck and hang himself. In the following scene, Oliver has reunited with Mr. Brownlow and is once again living peacefully with him. Fagan has been arrested, and Oliver desires to pay him a visit in jail. Brownlow brings him to the jail, where they discover Fagan shouting and sobbing in his cell. Oliver is heartbroken about Fagan's fate, since he had been a father figure and was always good to him. In the last scene, we see gallows being erected in the courtyard as Mr. Brownlow guides a heartbroken Oliver to a carriage. The citizens of the town begin to assemble to see Fagan's execution. That was all from the video, I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.